Uh, today, I am going to talk about <clears throat> two sociologists again, uh, Kemal Karpat and Cemil Meriç. Now, uh, I usually uh, put sociologists together. As you know, I go two by two. Uh, when I think that there is some similarity or contrast. Now, uh, these two sociologists share uh, some similarities in their life histories uh, and also in their approach to Ottoman Turkish uh, modernization. Uh, now, in their life, in terms of their life histories, uh, now they are both uh, mobile. Uh, they are born outside of Turkey and they migrated uh, into Turkey. And in the case of Kemal Karpat, uh, he lived most of his life in the uh, United States in the University of Wisconsin. Uh, in the case of Cemil Meriç, he was born when Hatay was. Uh, an uh, autonomous uh, est uh, autonomous uh, state, uh, autonomous region. Uh, as you know, it is uh, annexed as a result of a, a referendum into Turkey in 1939. But he's born in 1916. So at that time, it's like it was outside of the uh, boundaries uh, of uh, Turkey. Uh, and and hence his education was influenced, of course, because previously it was part of, of course, Ottoman Empire as uh, Hatay and Syria and Iraq as a whole, as, as you know. But with the First World War, uh, as Ottoman Empire lost, uh, Syria uh, became a French uh, territory and uh, and Hatay became a an autonomous uh, region. Anyway, uh, they are both are born, both born outside of Turkey, migrated into Turkey. They had their uh, university education uh, in Turkey uh, uh, for uh, Cemil Meriç, all of his uh, education. Whereas Kemal Karpat, as I said, uh, had his MA uh, in University of Washington and his uh, PhD from uh, New York uh, University. Uh, uh, now, uh, as I said, as I already uh, stated that, uh, he's born in Romania and migrated to Turkey in 1937 and started uh, in law school in uh, Istanbul University. Uh, and received a law degree. And after that, he went abroad and he had his MA and PhD from uh, American universities. And he, he stayed there uh, and worked in uh, various universities, uh, for example, between 1962 and 67, he was in New York University. And that is for five years. Uh, or between 1957 and 1962, 57 and 62, he was at University of Montana. But from my point of view, from 1968 to 1970, he was in Middle East Technical University, Department of Sociology, and uh, he was my professor uh, in uh, Middle East Technical University. I had a class on Ottoman transformation of Ottoman society, Ottoman social structure. Uh, and it was, uh, you know, for, uh, for a sociologist uh, uh, to have a course from a historical sociologist, actually a person who started as historian and then transformed into historical sociology and political sociology. Uh, you know, having that course for me uh, was important, uh, as I said in, uh, in previous uh, weeks, you know, my uh, taking a class from 
many classes actually, many courses from Vejal Cry or from uh, a course from uh, Sheriff Martin. You know, these are uh, very important for a student, you know, uh, with whom you had uh, this course and that course, you know. Uh, and I had my uh, Ottoman uh, sociology, historical sociology of uh, Ottoman transformation from Kemal Karpat in 1968. That was my uh, fourth year. Uh, and then I had a Fulbright scholarship and went to University of Chicago. But he continued uh, until 1970. Uh, but actually, at that time, he was already, he already joined Wisconsin University in 1967. And he stayed there from 1967 to 2003, huh? uh, really, for uh, uh, 36 years, he was a member of uh, Wisconsin University of History, History Department. But in History Department, he was, an, uh, he was teaching as an historical uh, sociologist, mostly Ottoman, on Ottoman history, uh, on Ottoman history. Uh, in 1992-93, he was in Bill Kent University, but in 2003, uh, he left Wisconsin University and came to uh, Istanbul Şehir University, uh, Istanbul City uh, University. And he stayed there until 2019, uh, actually the year uh, he died, actually. Okay, now, uh, Kemal Karpat's uh, contributions to sociology, to development of sociology in Turkey uh, is through his publications. Since uh, he was mostly in University of Wisconsin and only during his last uh, years, last 15, 16 years, he was in Turkey. Of course, he had uh, Turkish students when he was in University of Wisconsin or when he was in Istanbul Şehir uh, University. Uh, but his publications uh, are uh, very important. Now, uh, uh, for example, one of the books that I was exposed early in my uh, education is a publication. Actually, he is the editor of that book, Political Modernization of Japan and Turkey. And that book for me, you know, it's a collected work. You know, there are uh, articles, uh, chapters on Japan's modernization and uh, Turkey's Ottoman Empire's uh, modernization. And uh, Kemal Karpat has a chapter and also he's an editor. That is in 1964. Actually, before that, in 1959, uh, he had this book, Turkey's Politics, Transition to multi-party uh, system published by Princeton University, that is in 1956. Uh, then in 1968, uh, uh, he has again an, uh, uh, a book on uh, Middle East this time. Uh, now, this is uh, the title of the book is Political and Social Thought in Contemporary Middle East, uh, published in uh, 1968. Uh, and then in 1973, and I think he became famous uh, with these two books that published consecutively in 1973 and 1975, Social Change and Politics in Turkey, published by Brill, uh, which is, you know, Brill is a, a publishing house uh, which publishes books on Turkey uh, modernization, Turkish modernization, Ottoman, Ottoman history, and Turkey's foreign policy in transition. Uh, okay, but uh, his most recent books are uh, the politicization of Islam, that is in 2001, politicization of political emergence of political Islam, and then two books that came after that uh, are books uh, that are published after uh, the, the coming uh, to power of uh, a, a party of uh, political Islam, 
uh, in in 2002. Now, one uh, uh, one of the books uh, is Elites and Religion from Ottoman Empire to Turkish uh, Republic. Now, that is 2010. Uh, and then he also published in 2009 the Gece Kondo, Rural Migration and uh, Urbanization. Okay, now, uh, I will develop on uh, two books. Uh, now, one is uh, the one uh, that, have not, that I have not mentioned. Now, this is published in 2004. It is titled as Studies on Turkish Politics and Society. Now, in this book, uh, Kemal Karpat collected his articles that he has written in various journals. Uh, he, he collected them uh, together. Uh, and they are indeed uh, articles, each of them uh, written separately, but uh, while bringing together, also, uh, of course, uh, it is uh, revised. They are uh, usually uh, revised. Uh, and uh, he himself says that uh, these articles are mostly uh, based on his research. Uh, uh, that one is this politicization of Islam uh, and reconstruction of identity, state, and faith uh, and community. In, in late Ottoman state, you know, that was uh, one of the research that entered into this. Uh, now, the second one is uh, studies on Ottoman social and political history uh, and the Ottoman past and uh, today's Turkey. You know, uh, he, uh, he, he put uh, research articles into this book uh, that are based on uh, on these, uh, and and he says that in this book, uh, you know, uh, the articles published are mostly after uh, Second World War, and especially uh, during uh, 1960s and later, uh, actually. And uh, uh, his okay. Now, what is his uh, main thesis? What is he arguing? Uh, in these essays. Now, Kemal Karpat uh, arguing that, uh, that uh, for to understand Ottoman modernization, Ottoman and uh, Turkish modernization, uh, we have to be able to assess uh, uh, both continuities, continuities and transformations. Now, uh, his basic thesis is that uh, even in 2000s, in the present, uh, you know, when he, he wrote his uh, book 2010, okay, uh, at least that is uh, available. I, I can read his argument from uh, from that book. Uh, 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 in Ottoman times and in uh, Republican times. There is the continuity of Islam, uh, which is as a uh, as a basic element. Uh, secondly, secondly, uh, in the second half of nineteenth century, and during uh, uh, Republic uh, or the, the second uh, constitutional monarchy and the Republic, uh, the Turkishness. Turkish nationalism. Uh, so Islam and Turkish nationalism are two continuous elements in Ottoman transformation modernization. And, uh, 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 and, and hence, uh, we have to be able to understand uh, continuity as well as transformation, especially uh, continuity. His focus is on uh, continuity. Now, he this, he argues uh, this continuity uh, thesis against those who says that uh, starting with constitutional monarchy of 1908, and especially after 
1923 establishment of the republic there was a break break uh, a shift uh, 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 in terms of politics in terms of economics uh, in terms of language uh, in all aspects uh, there's a break uh, there's a uh, discontinuity uh, you know uh, uh, now there are many many people uh, writing uh, on uh, on Turkish on Ottoman Turkish modernization argue this uh, Bernard Levis for example Bernard Levis uh, or other uh, people writing uh, in Ottoman uh, Turkish uh, Republican uh, modernization emphasize uh, the break discontinuity uh, between Ottoman Empire, uh, Ottoman society, uh, and uh, and Turkish Republic. Whereas uh, Kemal Karpat says, no, there was a continuity. Uh, of course, there was breaks. He he cannot he is not able to not to accept that. For example, in terms of uh, alphabet, you know, there is a change from uh, Arabic alphabet into Latin alphabet. Uh, there is a purification uh, of language from Ottoman uh, to Turkish language. Uh, of course, there are uh, uh, discontinuities in terms of he, he, for example, he contributes to this uh, aspect, uh, migration, uh, migration from uh, Russian, uh, as Russian transformation uh, took place, Russian Empire, being transformed, some of the Turkish Muslim elements migrated to Ottoman Empire uh, and Turkish Republican uh, territories. And and more important, as Balkans, Balkans, Balkan countries uh, had their uh, nation had established their uh, nation states, uh, uh, Greece, uh, Bulgaria, Romania, uh, his. Uh, country of birth, Romania, uh, you know, from these countries, uh, especially before uh, First World War and also after, uh, there has been migrations, migrations. Now, these migrations are, uh, you know, there are continuities and discontinuities. These migrations, on the one hand, contributed to uh, uh, identity, uh, political, cultural, uh, religious uh, uh, homogenization, because uh, not only uh, Turkish and Muslim, Muslim populations migrated into Turkey, but also from Turkey, especially during the First World War and, and after, uh, non-Muslim populations migrated uh, from uh, Ottoman Empire and from uh, from Turkey uh, to, uh, as I said, to <clears throat> especially Balkan uh, Balkan countries or uh, Caucasian uh, countries. So uh, uh, this uh, this con uh, contributes uh, this element, this migration, uh, and in migration, immigration, and out migration. Both of them contributes to continuity in one sense. It contributes to uh, continued uh, contributes to continuity of Turkishness, Turkish nationalism, and Islam, uh, uh, religious uh, continuity. But also a new uh, population uh, from with different modernization experiences in Balkans and in uh, in Russia. Uh, they migrate and uh, they bring uh, they bring innovations. Uh, innovations uh, into Ottoman Empire uh, when the migrations uh, took place at that time, and into uh, Turkish Republic uh, when uh, uh, that took place after the establishment of uh, after Republic. Uh, now, uh, Kemal Karpat says that uh, actually this continuity contributes uh, to uh, a synthesis uh, in Turkey, a synthesis of uh, actually uh, modernism and 
religion and Islam, modernism, rationality, uh, and uh, 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 science and technology, uh, and in that sense, uh, civilization, Western civilization, uh, um, that is, uh, that's a break, uh, of course, this uh, new science and technology, modernization uh, is a new element, but it, it, it has combi combined with uh, a continuous element of Islam and of uh, national identity, uh, national identity. Uh, now, he thinks that uh, without understanding the cultural, historical roots uh, of uh, uh, recent developments, present developments uh, during the multi-path system or during 60s or 70s, 80s, uh, without understanding the roots of historic, without understanding historical and uh, cultural roots, particularly says uh, uh, Islam, regarding Islam, uh, he says, now this is a quote from him, uh, which has evolved sometimes in opposition, mostly in tandem with social change and its underlying classes. Okay, now uh, this is actually a quote from him, from the introduction of this book. Uh, he says that many current developments in Turkey cannot be understood without relating them to their historical and cultural roots. And this is particularly true regarding Islam, which has evolved sometimes in opposition, but mostly in tandem, parallel with social change and its underlying uh, ideas. Huh? Uh, so he says that in that, in that book, uh, many chapters actually address this issue, how uh, uh, modernization, uh, rationality, science, uh, and uh, Islam, faith uh, came together uh, and, and uh, uh, from his point of view, how it became a synthesis uh, uh, instead of uh, an opposition. You see, his, uh, his, uh, his approach actually uh, is that uh, his, he sees, as a historical sociologist, instead of polarization, uh, uh, actually coming together a synthesis, uh, and he, he tries to bring it out and put it in front of different uh, parties who are arguing uh, uh, with each other. Uh, but uh, a reviewer of one of his books, uh, actually a, a historian, a, an American uh, economic historian, he is an economic historian, uh, Donald uh, Coatert, uh, Donald Coatert from State University uh, of New York at Binghamton. Uh, he, he, uh, he has a review of uh, his book, uh, which, already, which I already uh, mentioned, the title of the book, remember, was Politization of Islam, Reconstructing Identity, State, Faith, and Community in Late Ottoman State. Okay, Polit Politization of Islam, Reconstructing Identity, uh, so Muslim and Turkish Identity, uh, State, Transformation of State, starting the beginning of 19th century through 19th century, through reforms and uh, reactions of ulama, of religious uh, uh, leaders uh, and people as a whole to these uh, transformations at the state level, uh, state reforms uh, and the communities, of course, as Ottoman empires, economy and society are more and more forcefully opened, especially after Tanzimat, to 
expanding uh, Western capitalism. Uh, Western capitalism. Now, uh, in this book, uh, uh, Kemal Karpat is focusing on Ottoman era, especially 19th century, and the first uh, two decades of uh, 20th century. Uh, and he tries to show, on the one hand, uh, how Islam is involved, especially in the second half of uh 19th century and the uh, first two decades uh, and and how islam and uh, turkish nationalism uh, 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 came together and uh, remember uh, our first two sociologists uh, zia gokal and prince sabahattin especially for zia gokal remember the synthesis he was also after a synthesis of uh modernization nationalism turkish nationalism and uh western civilization uh, or contemporary uh, civilization uh, remember so uh, kemal karpat is saying that after and uh, the zia Gukal died in 1924 uh, uh, the, uh, kemal karpat lived through uh 20th century and as he published this book in 2001 uh, he observed uh, uh, 100 years of uh 20th century and he says he is actually his thesis is that the agokal uh, the agokalps uh, utopia uh, or uh, uh uh, uh, yearning for a synthesis, synthesis took place. <coughs> but uh, <coughs> Donald Cortet, <coughs> excuse me, uh, argues against this. Uh, he says that uh, Kemal Karpat is exaggerating uh, this synthesis. Uh, now, uh, instead of a continuity from uh, Ottoman times uh, to 2001, uh, there are breaks, breaks. So uh, Donald Quartert is uh, criticizing uh, Kemal Karpat's uh, book uh, from the point of view of uh, break thesis. And uh, there's a break between Ottoman Empire and uh, Republican uh, state and uh, state and society. Ottoman, uh, there's a break between Ottoman state and society and Republican state and society. Uh, not only in terms of uh, alphabet or uh, language or uh, uh, some economic issues, but in other uh, issues as well. Uh, so from uh, uh, this point of view, uh, he says that. Uh, now, this is uh, both uh, from uh, Donald Cotard. Uh, he says this. This book is an extended essay uh, regarding the author's ruminations on Ottoman history, Turkish politics, and their interconnections. Ottoman history, Turkish politics, and their interconnections. While digressing digressions, uh, like going back to digress, by, uh, are uh, often fascinating. They did they detract from the clarity and uh, cohesion of Kemal Karpan's arguments. Uh, so uh, he says there's a confusion uh, as he goes back and forth historically, uh, you know, 100 uh, 100 years. Although in this book he's focusing mostly on the Ottoman era, but he's also uh, focusing on Ottoman era from the point of view of the present time. Pres now, he is saying that present Turkish Ottoman and Turkish state and society has a continuity uh, uh, with uh, 100 years ago uh, Ottoman uh, uh, transformations, Ottoman <clears throat> formations. Uh, between state, uh, religion, and society. That's what he's saying. 
uh, but uh, Cortet is saying that now going back and forth 100 years uh, and uh, not providing enough evidence uh, about the continuity, uh, or if he thinks there is uh, some evidence, but his uh, looseness of his arguments is uh, distracting understanding. Uh, and he continues, the book is fully enmeshed in important debates around the no nature of the late Ottoman state, late Ottoman state, second half of uh, 19th century and first two dec decades of 20th century. Now, uh, Quartet uh, focuses on this, this issue that I have mentioned uh, so far. Was it a multinational and multi-religious state and society, Ottoman society, multinational and multi-religious. The millet system uh, in Ottoman Empire had a millet system. Okay, the majority and dominant millet was uh, Islam, Islamic community, but there was also Christian and Jewish uh, minorities, minorities. Uh, and, and they they uh, they were present throughout uh, Ottoman history, and they were actively present uh, during second half of nineteenth century and the first two decades, if you think of it, of uh, twentieth century. For example, in nineteen o eight Parliament, nineteen o eight Parliament was uh, multi-religious and uh, multi-ethnic. But, uh, of course, Kemal Karpat uh, knows this, uh, but he says that uh, although it was multi-national and multi-religious, uh, Turkish Islamic, Turkish Islamic uh, synthesis uh, already uh, formed and continued to the present, to 2001. Uh, you know, uh, when the book was uh, published. So Cortet is asking, was the Ottoman society and state multi-national and multi-religious or, or Turkish and Muslim, Turkish Muslim? Uh, this reader, he himself, he is referring to himself, uh, Cortet, together with many others, sees the empire as a largely successful experiment in multinationalism. Uh, so Cortet thinks that it was multinational and multi-religious that was destroyed uh, by the great powers in World War I. Uh, so uh, Cortet is saying that it was a multinational, multi-religious uh, empire, state and society, but great powers, the Western powers, uh, England, France, uh, okay, they were opposing in First World Germany, uh, and their struggle, struggle between the great powers, Russia, of course, Russia, Germany, uh, England, France, and other Italy and others, uh, yeah, Western powers struggling among each other, uh, and uh, how to control uh, Ottoman Empire. Uh, on which side Ottoman Empire should be, uh, etc. Uh, so during uh, this uh, so many years uh, of uh, the war, uh, the war, uh, the First World War, uh, destroyed destroyed this experiment, this multinational, multi-religious multi uh, experiment. Karfat, uh, in contrast emphasizes the identity of the empire as a Muslim enterprise and that of Sultan Abdul Hamid II as the caliph. So uh, uh, Cortet uh, says that uh, uh, Kar uh, Karpat uh, focuses on the last uh, quarter uh, of 19th century and early 10 years of 20th century when Abdul, uh, Sultan Abdul Hamid II was reigning as, as caliph uh, and as uh, sultan. He, 
Uh, uh, so uh, uh, he now uh, Karpat thinks that this was an experiment in uh, a, a continuity of Islam and Islamic state and society. Uh, uh, whereas, uh, uh, whereas uh, Cortet thinks that no, still, even under the uh, Sultan Abdullah II, it was a multinational, multi-religious uh, state and society. Okay, now this is indeed uh, uh, an interesting argument uh, between the two. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Cortet. Uh, is not rejecting, uh, you know, this is uh, an, a book uh, of so many chapters and uh, and indeed uh, he, he appreciates uh, valuable research, especially uh, on uh, in and out migration of uh, Muslim and Turkish uh, populations. Uh, so, uh, and this is really uh, uh, 533 pages. Uh, this book is uh, made up, and uh, and Cortet says, uh, you know, uh, it, uh, there are full of uh, material and arguments, and he wishes that uh, it was more consistent uh, instead of a collection uh, of chapters, uh, not very much related to each other, uh, a more shorter and uh, a, a tighter argument. Anyway, uh, but there is also uh, a positive review of uh, one of uh, his books, uh, and that is from University of Bradford, uh, Tom Gallagher, uh, and uh, he's reviewing uh, his 1902, the next year, uh, it's published by Brill, uh, studies on Ottoman social and political hist history, uh, selected essays and articles. Now, uh, you know, uh, Gallagher thing that Kemal Karpat is, and this is a trailblazing scholar, huh? and opening a road uh, for the uh, field of uh, fields of Ottoman, Balkan, uh, and modern Turkish studies. You know, in in uh, many universities in the world, you know, there are uh, Ottoman studies, Balkan studies, Turkish studies. Sometimes they are all together in the same department. Sometimes they are in different departments. Now, uh, Kemal Karpat, for these departments in many universities in the world, is uh, an, indes an indispensable scholar, an indispensable uh, researcher, a trailblazing. Uh, uh, enlightening uh, researcher, uh, and so he uh, uh, appreciates. He also notes the repetition uh, through the chapters because it's a collection of uh, articles. But uh, uh, but he uh, he, uh, he he thinks that uh, Kemal Karpat shows how the Ottomans managed rather than destroyed ethnic identities through millet system. He shows sympathy, and this is a quote now from Gallagher. Uh, Gallagher. Uh, he shows sympathy for their dilemma as the 19th century down as when the need to modernize the empire's institutions in order to stave off dismemberment clashed with the Ottoman structure and traditions of the government. Uh, so uh, he goes on, uh, Gallagher thinks that unfortunately, uh, many administrators, Ottoman uh, administrators, did not uh, understand the nature of expanding capitalism uh, and were not able to develop uh, a, a more successful response uh, to, uh, to encounter, to face uh, uh, and uh, like perhaps uh, Japan, uh, you see Japan uh, being far removed from Western capitalism. You see, when uh, in that book, uh, Karpat edited, Japan and Turkey, when they are compared, you see, Japan was so further removed 
from Western uh, center, metropolitan centers, you know, the center of capitalism, of London, of Paris, of Berlin, of, you know, uh, these centers that it was uh, able to isolate, uh, turn into itself and, uh, and develop a, a more uh, autonomous or semi-autonomous path of modernization. Whereas, unfortunately, Ottoman modernization was uh, was not able. Ottoman modernizers, Ottoman statesmen, uh, were not able to uh, to keep a distance. Uh, I mean, their uh, technology, uh, their economic base, uh, uh, their level of organization of their or army of bureaucracy. Uh, were not enough uh, to stop uh, Western uh, mer- uh, commercialization uh, and capitalization and, and, and becoming uh, a semi-colony. Uh, now, okay, of course, Ottoman Empire is not colonized like India or uh, like China, uh, or, uh, but uh, it was uh, and uh, an, uh, an administration for collection of tax, the Western powers established uh, a bureaucratic organization within Ottoman Empire, uh, independent or relatively autonomous from Ottoman state, uh, to collect tax, to pay Ottoman debts, you see. Uh, so under these conditions, Ottoman uh, uh, intelligentsia, Ottoman uh, statesmen, they were not able uh, to develop a, a relatively autonomous path of uh, modernization until when? Until the establishment of the Republic. Now, with the establishment of Republic, uh, that autonomy, uh, relative autonomy, was established. Uh, and through 1920s and 30s and 40s, uh, uh, clearly a, a more uh, autonomous path of modernization strategy uh, was developed. Okay, now uh, I think uh, this much uh, is enough on uh, Kemal Karpat. Now let me go into uh, into Jamil Meric. Okay. Now, uh, as already, uh, I already made an introduction to uh, Jamil Meric. Uh, now, as uh, he was born in uh, relatively autonomous, uh, uh, autonomous region uh, until 1939, and came to uh, to Istanbul, uh, graduated from uh, Pertemnial uh, High School, uh, and entered entered. Istanbul University, and he graduated from uh, the French department, French language department of uh, Istanbul University. Okay, French language department, and and he became an instructor there. You see, uh, uh, at the beginning I said that both Kemal Karpat and Cemil Meric has an advantage in comparison to. Uh, uh, for example, some uh, sociologists that I reviewed uh, from uh, Istanbul University, uh, Amiran Kutkan uh, or Fundikolo uh, 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 or, uh, uh, and, and some others that uh, I reviewed from there. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, now Cemil Meric and uh, Kemal Karpat. Uh, they were from outside of Dersim var, Dersim. Okay, now, uh, uh, I was saying that uh, there's a similarity in their uh, biography. Uh, being outside of Ottoman Empire uh, or Turkish Republic in the case, uh, in both uh, cases, both of for both of them, and bringing the experience uh, from being from being outside. Now, in the case of Jamil Meric, his early introduction to French uh, in uh, Hatay, 
uh, during his uh, primary education, secondary, uh, secondary education years. So uh, I mean, this is real advantage in knowing uh, a, a language like your mother tongue. Uh, so he had Turkish and French, two languages, uh, you know, as a, uh, as a translator, uh, as an instructor, uh, teaching uh, French and, and uh, knowing uh, French history. Uh, he knows Western and French history so well, uh, really, uh, and hence he is able to criticize uh, Western uh, sociological theories, Western ideologies, especially uh, ideologies of liberalism, fascism, socialism. Uh, you know, he goes uh, into the roots of uh, these uh, these ideas, these uh, idea systems, uh, uh, and reads primary uh, sources. Uh, so that is the advantage. Now, in the case of uh, Kemal Karpat. Uh, of course, for, for in Romania, he had uh, a language, uh, and then later uh, being a professor for so many years in foreign, you know, in American universities, it provided him also for uh, in the advantage of uh, publishing his books in English. In this case, publishing his books uh, in English, uh, and hence, you know, I compared citations to Cemil Meric and Kemal Karpat. Uh, Kemal Par Karpat's citations are so many, uh, you know, for each book. Some For some books, there are uh, hundreds of uh, citations. And it, you can just uh, go and look uh, Google Scholar. Uh, uh, anyway, um, now uh, let me focus more on uh, Cemil Meric. Uh, now, uh, I think uh, his, uh, uh, his career, his development, development of his ideas, his approach. Uh, uh, now, I should mention that uh, one of my uh, sources is uh, a chapter uh, written by Recep Şentürk uh, on Cemil Meric, uh, which is, uh, you know, many chapters I advise you uh, to read in Çağatay Özdemir's uh, two-volume book on uh, Turkish sociologists. Uh, so the chapter on Cemil Meric is written by uh, Recep Şentürk. So uh, I uh, benefited from that. But I also read other articles uh, on him. And I read, uh, now I started reading it in previous years, but uh, uh, this year I read it uh, much, much more closely. Uh, this book that is edited uh, actually uh, by his daughter, Imut Meric, uh, 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 Sociological Notes uh, or Sociology Notes and Conferences. Uh, sociology Notes and Conferences. Uh, uh, which is uh, published in 1993, uh, and this is a 700 uh, book. And you know, when I went through it, uh, you know, uh, I am also I am familiar about Western modernization, uh, French modernization, and German modern English modernization, how they diverge and uh, converge. But uh, but Cemil Meric's uh, uh, evaluations of uh, of Western modernizations and how uh, they form uh, a system and they expand uh, to the rest of the world and to Ottoman Empire and to Turkey. You know his uh, his understanding uh, of uh, uh, of that uh, history the, that is. Uh, historical sociology of European modernization, uh, uh, capitalism, uh, uh, and, uh, and 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 theories of Marx, uh, of Durkheim, of Spencer, uh, of Saint Simon, 
you know, uh, actually uh, one of his books uh, is on Saint Simon. Uh, it's titled Saint Simon as the first sociologist and first socialist. And this is published in 1967. Uh, you know, he uh, he goes really into uh, uh, how uh, uh, sociology is established, and then, in a sense, divided into two as uh, uh, Kantian and Durkheimian uh, positivistic sociology and uh, Marxian uh, historical materialist. Uh, or dialectical, he emphasizes more dialectical, historical uh, sociology of uh, Marx and Engels. You know, uh, he he's, he goes into uh, into the into these theories. You see, starting from Saint Simon, you know, both schools both schools uh, identify as their uh, forerunner uh, Saint Simon. Uh, as first sociologist and as first socialist. Uh, uh, both of them uh, appreciate that beginning. And then how the two, in a sense, diverged. Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, especially uh, in his lectures, in his lectures during uh, 1967 and 68 uh, and 69, you know, when I was reading his lectures in 1967, 68, 69, uh, his uh, in-depth analysis of uh, Durkheim, Marx, uh, socialism, fascism, uh, the ideologies, liberalism. Uh, you see, 1967, 68, 69. These are the years of student activism uh, in Istanbul uh, and in Ankara, uh, in Paris, in uh, Chicago, you know, in uh, the, the last uh, part of 1968 and 1969 until 1972, I was in University of Chicago. I know, you know, student activism there. Uh, and of course, I but before I went to uh, Chicago, I knew student activism in Middle East Technical University and student activism in Istanbul. Now, at that time, Cemil Miric uh, were giving these lectures in Istanbul University about all this you know, historical, uh, sociological account of uh, currents, uh, ideological uh, currents, and social scientific uh, approaches. Their, coming and influencing the youth. Uh, and it's going towards 1968 uh, May events in Paris uh, uh, and in 19, the, uh, the last parts of uh, 1968 and especially 1969 in Turkey, the, uh, the student uh, activism clashes with uh, American uh, Navy in Istanbul, you know, all that. Uh, during that time, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's making such an evaluation. Now, I will come to that. But before that, let me finish uh, his, the naming of uh, introducing his books. I started with his first book, actually, on San Simon. Actually, before this, there was a book on Indian literature. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, he says that uh, at one point uh, in his life, uh, he he became uh, a short period in between 1960 and 1964. He entered into Indian philosophy. He calls it himself, uh, you know, Indian my Indian philosophy period. He says, uh, uh, but uh, before that, uh, you know, this is actually this philosophical ideological phases in his uh, sad depictions this i borrowed this from uh, from that chapter uh, that i already uh, mentioned in uh, chatai özdemir uh, özdemir's book uh, by uh, recep şentürk actually uh, recep şentürk 
uh, of course, takes this from his, his studies of Cemil Meric, uh, Meric's books uh, and his his, uh, his biography, his autobiography. Uh, Cemil Meric, uh, as I already said, between 1960 and 64, he qualifies himself entering into uh, Indian philosophy. But the more important is, uh, I think, between 1938 and 1960, and so many years, I really. Uh, there is uh, 22 years incubation, incubation. Now, that incubation period is uh, his trying to achieve a synthesis of thinking. You know, he really wants to think beyond the boundaries. Now, uh, uh, actually, Foucault at one point uh, defines thinking as transgression of uh, boundaries. Thinking is transgression. Uh, now, I saw this in Jamil Meric's lectures, especially during 1967-68. During 19, so I think that student activism uh, enlarged him. Uh, you know, he's thinking. He's uh, transgressing the boundaries of of the taboos and uh, and thinking. Uh, but in order to be able to do that, he needed that incubation period. And before that, actually, he was between, he says, uh, between 1917 and 1925. Yeah, he, he is, uh, of course, he's born in 1916 anyway. His childhood, in his childhood, he was strictly Muslim. Okay. Now, from uh, 10 years old, uh, he was a chauvinist nationalist. And as a matter of fact, because of this uh, chauvinist nationalism, he was thrown out from uh, Lycée, uh, and hence he came to Istanbul and finished his Lycée education there. And between 1936 and 38, uh, still he is in uh, okay. Now he is in Istanbul already. He's, uh, he has a socialist uh, uh, period, and then he has 23 years of incubation. And then there is an Indian philosophy period. And then between 1964 until his death in 1987, uh, Ottomanism, uh, nationalism, uh, Islam uh, uh, combination, the synthesis, a similar synthesis to, uh, to Kemal Karpat. Yeah? Here, uh, in terms of continuity from uh, uh, Islamic continuity and and Turkish uh, nationalism entering uh, uh, into Islam, Islam and uh, Turkish nationalism synthesis and it's being continuous and uh, uh, the critical of uh, uh, the uh, Ottoman intelligentsia and Republican in, in intelligentsia, who who uh, disregarded this uh, continuity uh, and in, instead focused more uh, on the shift, uh, on the break. Uh, anyway, now he tries to give uh, this synthesis uh, now. Uh, from uh, in his books, for example, he has this book from prosperity to civilization in 1974. Uh, now, uh, civilization, this Western capitalism and technology expanding. Uh, uh, actually, he notes this uh, similarity between Ottoman uh, Turkish society state and German. Uh, uh, society and state vis-a-vis -vis, uh, uh, English and French uh, civilization expanding and uh, Germany, uh, or German intelligentsia responding to it, defending the, uh, the national culture, native culture and language, uh, uh, tr uh, trying to develop uh, German to match with French uh, French and uh, uh, English, and uh, uh, developing the approach of culture, cultural uh, culture. He notes this in one of his 
lectures uh, during uh, 1967 or uh, 68. Uh, now, uh, this from uh, prosperity to civilization, and this capitalist uh, economic system is coming uh, with its uh, civil civilizing processes. Uh, think of El Elias here, Elias. Uh, Elias is civil, uh, he's focusing on European civilization, but now Kemal Karpat or Tur sociologists in Turkey are focusing on uh, uh, expanding of this capitalist uh, transformation of states and societies in non-European uh, societies and states, uh, of course. So uh, that's uh, he starts doing this in this book, in uh, in another book published again uh, in the same year, this country, bu ülke, this country, but the next one, in the threshold of a new world, a new world, okay, and he's trying uh, to develop a new vision in a sense, and here East and West, uh, he in these lectures he has criticisms of Orientalism. Edward Said's book Orientalism, how Edward Said criticizes, uh, borrowing from Foucault's uh, critical uh, approaches of modernity, uh, modernity and uh, modernist approaches uh, 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 to the East of of Western, uh, Western social scientists. Western social scientists are uh, contributing actually to the development of uh, Western identity, Western civilizational identity by opposing, uh, opposing the East, the uh, Orient, the Orient, uh, the Orient. Uh, now, uh, what are they doing? They are caricaturizing in a sense, uh, simplifying uh, the Orient, uh, the Eastern civilizations in the Asia, Asian uh, civilizations of Ottoman uh, Islamic, Ottoman Islamic uh, state and society, or Indian uh, state and society, Chinese, you know, uh, how they are irrational, emotional, uh, static, instead of rational, uh, dynamic, uh, progressive uh, developments in the world, you know. Uh, so here uh, uh, he has this book, Light Comes from the East. Uh, so uh, in one of uh, the lectures, uh, okay, uh, there are these Orientalists and, and now they are Occidentalists. Uh, now in Turkish, Şarkiyatçılık uh, uh, and uh, Maghrib uh, uh, looking at the uh, uh, West uh, from the East. Uh, uh, okay, now uh, let me continue. From Culture to Wisdom, another book. Uh, uh, now he, he, he knows Plato very well and from Plato's cave and those who are unable to emerge from the cave uh, uh, anyway, there are all these books, really. And but for me, uh, for while preparing uh, for this class, uh, reading of these sociological notes and conferences, uh, especially as I said, the lectures during 1960, uh, uh, 67 and 68 was uh, were really. Uh, very exciting. Uh, now, for example, at one point, I think it is uh, 1968. Uh, he says uh, how how in the West, in the West, uh, encyclopedist encyclopedia was uh, you know the, for the uh, emergence of bourgeoisie and uh, how this uh, uh, bourgeoisie through uh, encyclopedia was able uh, to, uh, in a sense, uh, destroy the feudal traditional uh, uh, and, uh, and Christian, uh, Christian uh, institutions. Uh, you know, he 
uh, he, he really uh, he, he uh, describes this uh, in uh, so, so forcefully. Uh, I was really uh, uh, surprised, uh, very much uh, uh, admired his way of uh, his understanding uh, of uh, of this uh, this development uh, of uh, the liberal uh, uh, liberal ideology emergence of uh, liberal ideology influenced from uh, developments on in uh, sci uh, natural sciences how that uh, uh, showed itself in the social sciences, uh, in the, on the one hand, emergence of uh, economics uh, as a science, emergence of political political science were already, of course, uh, of course, there. Uh, but emergence of uh, sociology. Uh, but before emergence of sociology, the encyclopedia, the emergence of uh, this is fr before French Revolution, leading to uh, French Revolution. Uh, now, at one point, he says, "Thinking, uh, thinking is a curse. Thinking uh, is a curse." Uh, uh, you know, this is uh, seven uh, December 1967. Uh, course, his course. It starts. Düşünce bir bedduadır. Uh, batıda peşin hükümleri yıkan, yeni bir değerler lafasını yaratan intelijansiyanın doğuşu 18. yüzyıldadır. Encyclopedistler. Now, I, I read this uh, from his mouth, actually, or uh, his daughter captured this while he is lecturing uh, from his mouth. Uh, now he says, you know, let me translate. Uh, thought, thinking, thinking is a curse. Uh, you know, it uh, it destroys uh, all of the given judgments. Uh, it destroys all. Uh, values uh, and uh, and it leads this new thinking through encyclopedic uh, are thinking in a new way that uh, that is unprecedented uh, and previously a new intelligentsia a modern intelligentsia is emerging in France uh, he is able to go into uh, into the materials. That uh, written by Didero, uh, Voltaire, uh, and others, uh, uh, and how uh, you know this uh, this new type of uh, uh, this is actually embodiment of enlightenment thought, uh, a, a positivistic enlightenment thought is emerging and uh, uh, destroying uh, of fighting against uh, feudal aristocracies and their ideology and uh, the church, the Catholic church, especially, uh, that aligned with aristocracy. Uh, so uh, actually here, uh, this is the, uh, the bourgeois revolution from, from below is emerging. And in, in this uh, 1967 lecture, He's, he's describing this uh, this emergence. Uh, it was uh, uh, really uh, interesting. Again, uh, in the same month, in 14th of uh, December 1967, he says, for example, about Marx. Uh, he says, uh, uh, Marx uh, is dialectics, uh, historical dialectics. Uh, that uh, that captures uh, contradictions and oppositions. Now, this this sentence. Uh, let me say it first in turn, then translate. Marx bizi peşin hükümlerden kurtardığı için büyüktür. Bir uyanık bulunma metodudur Marxism. Now, this is captured from his lecture. Now he says, uh, Marx uh, saves us from already established judgments. Uh, Prejudgments, actually, uh, that is he, that is his greatness. Uh, he he gives he provides us uh, with a method, uh, historical dialectical method. He 
he describes it later, historical dialectical method that makes us awake, awakens us. Uh, he provides uh, with a method of thinking, uh, method of uh, doing research. Uh, uh, you see, this is uh, 1960, the end of 1967. And then in 1968, he starts uh, you know, 1967, 68 academic year uh, starts uh, with Machiavelli. Uh, you know uh, how uh, you know in uh, a century ago, Ibn Khaldun uh, uh, was developing a theory of state and society, and uh, his a uh, 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 14th century. Uh, so, uh, proto sociologist, uh, historian, uh, a Muslim thinker, uh, philosopher, but not philosopher actually. He, he, he uh, now Jamil Meriz observes that Ibn Haldun keeps away uh, from philosophy. He's a more of a social scientist actually. Uh, and similarly, a hundred years later, Machiavelli uh, does a similar. Uh, objective observation of transformations that are leading to uh, to Renaissance uh, uh, and uh, to enlightenment and uh, an emergence of uh, reformation uh, and uh, and a new type of state and society uh, state uh, society. Now he goes, you know, his uh, and it's interesting analysis of. Uh, Machiavelli, uh, and then he goes. It's interesting uh, into analysis of uh, Italian uh, political developments. Uh, he doesn't. I didn't see a reference to Gramsci, but there might be while uh, he's uh, talking about uh, Italy and uh, emergence of uh, fascism uh, and how uh, it is distorted. Uh, or how at one point he says uh, Hitlerism is uh, Machiavellism went mad, mad, insane, uh, insane. Uh, so you know he's giving analysis of uh, Italian fascism, German fascism, uh, uh, other developments uh, in uh, in Europe. Uh, during First World War, during Second World War, in between and after, you know, he his uh, it seems the youth at that time, you know, they are they are ready to absorb uh, all this material, but in the meantime, of course, there is this polarization, uh, as you know, the, during 1960s and 70s. Uh, on the one side, there is uh, the, the more Islamist. Uh, Islamist nationalist uh, youth. Uh, on the other side, uh, on the other side, there is the revolutionary uh, Marxist uh, uh, youth. Uh, now, I think the listeners uh, uh, of the, of these lectures, there might be from both sides. Uh, I don't know really. One, I, uh, one has to investigate what was the composition of. Uh, students that uh, that uh, uh, Jamil Meric was lecturing during these 1967-68 uh, 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 events. Uh, now uh, these lectures. Uh, now actually, now in 19, uh, this is uh, 25 January 1968. Uh, he has this sentence. Uh, Again, I will read that uh, in uh, in Turkish and then translate. 19. yüzyılın ilk yarısındaki Alman düşünce adamının düşüncesiyle Türk aydınının günümüzdeki durumu birbirine benzer. Yalnız Alman düşünce adamı Roma'yı fethedenlerin torunudur. Protestanlık orada doğmuştur. Now, he says that uh, in the first half of uh, 19th century, German, German uh, thinkers, German German philosophers, their German uh, social scientists, uh, and uh, Turkish intelligentsia in uh, in 
1960s or in the Republican period uh, is similar. Now, the similarity, uh, you know, uh, I, I refer this here uh, to Elias and the civilizing process, how Elias uh, positions Germany vis-a-vis -vis, uh, England and, uh, and France, you know, the civilization and culture. Uh, and, uh, and German intelligentsia were able to develop uh, uh, an, an, edge, an original, an original, okay, that is the original philosophy of, uh, of Kant, Hegel, uh, leading to Feuerbach uh, and Marx, uh, uh, Fichte and others, uh, others. He goes into that. He goes into, uh, uh, into details. And as a matter of fact, after uh, stating uh, uh, th that sentence that I read in Turkish, uh, uh, actually I didn't uh, translate the second half, but now these German thinkers are offsprings of uh, those who conquered this German uh, empire, uh, empire uh, German empire, uh, conquering uh, Rome. Uh, and where uh, Protestant reform, uh, uh, reformation emerged, and where, uh, starting with Leibniz, uh, Leibniz, a German philosophy, uh, okay, idealistic philosophy at the beginning, and then later a materialistic, or according to General Jemil Merich, it is a post-materialistic. Uh, now, historical materialism. He thinks is post-materialist. Historical, uh, uh, he, uh, he rightly thinks that historical materialism is a, a critical, a, a critical distancing of mechanical materialism. Uh, some people uh, uh, is reductionistly reduces historical materialism to mechanical materialism. Now, Jamil Merich thinks uh, uh, that. Uh, no, it is a uh, historicalism is a dialectical, uh, historical dialectics, uh, and uh, an approach that that perceives and analyzes opposites uh, and contradictions, uh, contradictions. Uh, so you know, uh, I will not go uh, into uh, detail now. Before uh, finishing, I will uh, just talk about uh, two. Uh, more articles. Now, the one is by Sardar Poiraz, uh, a, a, an article published in uh, Comparative Studies of South Asia, Africa, and Middle East by Duke, Duke University Press. Duke University. The, 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 uh, the title of, uh, of the article is Thinking about Turkish Modernization, Cemil Meric on Turkish Language, Culture, and Intellectuals. Now here, uh, as similar to debate uh, between Cotard and, uh, and Kemal Karpat, here uh, Serdar Poyraz says that Cemil Meric is critical uh, of uh, the, uh, the uh, narrative of linear progress. That is, that's, this is his word, narrative of linear progress uh, of uh, Turkish modernization, as if Turkish modernization uh, as a uh, linear uh, process of uh, uh, civilization, modernization, uh, progress, as depicted, uh, now he says, uh, he, here, uh, Poiraz cites Bernard Lewis and Niazi Berkes. Now, Ber uh, and Bernard Lewis and Niazi Berkes uh, and other uh, uh, Republican uh, thinkers uh, think of uh, from uh, the beginning of 19th century uh, to the Republican uh, period and to the present, how uh, 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 modernization, Turkish modernization, uh, uh, parallel to westernization, uh, uh, and uh, somehow uh, uh, independent or relatively independent of 
expansion of uh, European uh, capitalism and modernity. Uh, uh, no, there were, uh, uh, and he says, Poydan says that Cemil Meriç critically assesses uh, uh, Ottoman and Turkish modernization, and uh, he, uh, instead of uh, appreciating uh, Ottoman uh, intelligentsia uh, states uh, men, uh, you know how uh, under under the conditions of uh, expansion of capitalism and great powers, in spite of those great powers, how these uh, statesmen, these intelligentsia, managed uh, to keep Ottoman Empire intact, and uh, uh, during 1920s, uh, a continuation of that uh, intelligence, were able to establish Turkish Republic. Now, uh, Cemil Meriç, Poyraz uh, state, is critical of this linear uh, narrative of linear uh, progress. And he uh, draws, uh, he thinks, Poyraz thinks, Cemil Meriç uh, debunks, debunks uh, this simplistic account and argues, that is a quote now, argues that modernization in Turkey is a complex process during which some essential cultural gradients of society, the language and shared norms of interpersonal behavior are badly, perhaps irreparably damaged. Okay, this is a quote from uh, Poyraz's uh, article. Uh, now, so, uh, according to Poyraz, Cemil Meriç is focusing more on alienating uh, impact of uh, Ottoman Turkish modernization or Ottoman uh, uh, Turkish intel intelligentsia, how they were uh, unable, uh, unable uh, to keep distance uh, from uh, expansion of Western capitalism and uh, uh, Western modernity, whereas, uh, whereas, uh, uh, according to Poyraz, Meriç thinks that they should have, uh, 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 they should have been uh, more uh, sympathetic to uh, to those aspects of Ottoman society and state uh, that is being. Uh, transformed or destroyed, actually. Uh, and here, uh, uh, Poyraz uh, draws our attention to religious orders and tariqats uh, as example, uh, the, the, the destroyed uh, institutions of the, uh, of the Ottoman uh, Empire. Uh, so uh, he says, rather than sing the praises of the Republican political elite for their ambitious project of uh, political and social en engineering, Meriç warns that their overconfident and hasty reforms push society to the brink of anomie by destroying cultural connections of Turkish society to its own history. And this is uh, indeed uh, uh, a very uh, serious uh, accusation uh, to uh, uh, to Ottoman and uh, uh, and Turkish intelligentsia, uh, uh, especially here uh, the secular intelligentsia uh, uh, or intelligentsia uh, that uh, uh, that kept distance uh, uh, and they are evaluated. This intelligentsia is evaluated as uh, alienated alienated from uh, M Turkish Muslim uh, uh, my, uh, population and culture uh, and culture. So this is one assessment. Uh, and uh, Poyraz uh, establishes a connection uh, between a, a Japanese thinker, Takuchi Yashumi uh, and Jalal El Ahmad in Iran and Takuchi Yashumi in Japan. Both of whom are, according to Poyraz, like uh, Cemil Meriç, uh, uh, are critical of 
uh, Western type of uh, Western style uh, modernization in Japan and uh, and in and Iran. I will not go into details. As, as a matter of fact, uh, I uh, I found some articles I put here. You can uh, read them. Uh, how Takushi Yoshimi uh, developed a method, uh, uh, the Asian Asian way of thinking, uh, Asia as it. Uh, 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 now in Jamil Meric, focusing on East, you know, light comes from the East, whereas Takushi Yashumi, Yoshimi uh, focuses on Asia versus Europe. So Asia-centered versus Euro-centered approaches. Uh, now there is this article you can read by Kwan Hissing Chan uh, on this Asia as a method. Uh, there, there is also this Anja Pistor Hatam on Jalal Ahmad reflections of, uh, on selected periods of Iranian history. Uh, okay, I think uh, I have already uh, uh, extended the lecture uh, beyond perhaps uh, your, uh, your patience. Uh, so I should stop here.